Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, I share with you my techniques and tips on how I created the hat, the shirt, and put the final details on this portrait. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, I started off using a piece of scrap pastel mat and then just tried a few combinations and that seemed to work for the straw hat. And for the black ribbon I'm using black and blue initially. Just ghosting the image now with the Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. And starting off just putting that white in just to get some pigment down there. This is the Carbothello white, it's quite chalky. Making sure I'm following the direction of the straw of the hat. Just getting the shapes right, this is the underdrawing, so it's just a matter of just getting everything in the right place. So using the Carbothello Black very lightly to start with, just to get an idea of the position of it. You don't want to go too heavy to start with. It's all about getting things in the correct place, you know, because I've done this freehand. Just adding a little bit of white now for the highlights areas. And then just glaze over them with the blue the lemon yellow just to create like a greeny bluey tinge to it now adding the carbothello black more deeper now so i'm pressing on uh, putting more pigment on there now i know the position's okay i'm just working in that pigment and then just putting some directions horizontally on this part here, just a few sort of strokes with the white and then just keep glazing over with the different colours. I'll tidy all that up later. And then same here, the strokes are going downwards, so I'm trying to get that sort of feeling of the shimmering of this area here. You really have to squint your eyes to see the value. So it needs to go a little bit darker, so I worked in a little bit of black and then just put in those little bits of white here and there for the shimmer. Now to get some idea for the straw now, I'm using these colours here, plus this colour from the Faber-Castell, which is a similar colour to what I'm looking for, which is 102. Here's the colours I picked up initially with the 708 grey pencil there as well, but I will be adding blue as well in places just to create more of a bluey, greeny colour. Just laying some pigment down over the white I've already put down, which creates a little bit of a glow. I'm just sort of building it up. You've just got to take your time with this. And now I'm using the 708 Carbothello pencil here which I not do the outline with it's always great to use grey uh, for sort of complicated designs and that and then you can just glaze over with different colours uh, it should not go muddy you see it just desaturates things uh, and so what I'm doing is working in the yellow ochre now here's the blue I'm just using that to make more of a sort of bluey greeny colour and then I've got the sort of burnt sienna and this colour to create the goldy feel together. Um, and it's just a case of playing really and just seeing what works. And just relax and, and it's all about getting the suggestion there. You don't have to put every detail same, every strand of straw and every subtle shadow. It'll just drive you nuts if you try to do that. All it is, it's actually your, your interpretation. So it's how you perceive it and and just feel your way, just open your heart, just let go of that mind who's trying to control and just let it happen, let these movements happen. What I tend to do is squint my eyes and try and find or locate a pattern and where it starts. Well, I could see here that there's like six pieces of straw and then it's weaved together, you know, there's six areas. So that's what I did there. I got the direction in, and then what I'm doing here is using the 708 pencil to get a feeling of the straw, how it's sort of weaved together in between the, the areas. But it's just trying to find that pattern. Once you've got that pattern, it all falls into place then. It becomes sort of natural and free-flowing. Uh, but initially you have to take, 
your time just to find your way. If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. Now once you've got that pattern in there, now you can just glaze over that with all the subtle colours. You know, I'm using the burnt sienna, lemon yellow, which creates gold. And I will be adding sort of the blue to create that greeny feel to it as well. So it's more or less like the primer is using the burnt sienna as the red, lemon yellow for the yellow and the blue. So it's just combining them pencils to get the colour subtlety you're looking for. And doing the same procedure on this side of the hat here. I'm just showing you a bit of real time here just so you can see the pace I'm working at. And it's just a case of getting the direction of that weave and the straw and just putting random strokes in there and just be free flowing with it. And then where you've put the grey, where you've put this sort of weave, then you can start glazing over then with the burnt sienna and green which creates a natural shadow because it's actually complementary so green and red together is a complementary and creates its own natural shadow and it makes it more realistic then in between this this weave and then you can add that sort of lemon yellow to it uh, or the and the color that is similar to it which is like a lemon yellow but more of a, new, uh, a desaturated lemon yellow is to create that sort of a straw feel to it so it's a case of combining those pencils once you put that white in you see then you've got something then to glaze over the top and that white will shine through and create really nice sort of feeling of aliveness and uh, it gives it that sort of that shimmer and that f really feels like that is actually a straw hat then it becomes quite natural and if you be spontaneous with it and don't try and put every little bit of detail exactly the same it looks quite natural and realistic really and without all the stress of trying to get every detail in there just like to set this opportunity to thank all my patreons for their wonderful support every month i can't thank you enough if you're considering joining my own patreon and would like the benefit of longer slower and more in-depth videos please check out the link in the description below. Now this portrait, part one and part two, will be on my Patreon, all in real time, so you can actually hear me and see me create this step by step, and you get to know all the sort of thoughts and feelings I've got moment by moment, so please check that out when it's available. Just making sure the shadow areas are right now, just squinting my eyes. I'm adding a little bit of brown in here as well, just to create a, a sort of a shadowy feel, because brown and blue together is really good. Now it's exactly the same procedure I've shown you earlier, just using that grey to mark it up, you know, the actual pattern of it. See the pattern, see the movement of it, and then just draw it in. And then I'm using the Faber-Castell white now to get some highlights here and there because there's not many directional strands on this part of the front because it's foreshortened so it's a it's quite fascinating to do because all it is is suggestions of color dots and dashes here and there and it's a jumble up of all different sort of um, textures and it was quite interesting to sort of pull off to make it look realistic because there's nothing really to actually find a pattern because it's so sort of random with all the different marks you've just got to paint what you see in this instance so what i always say is just let go of trying to work out what it is or never name anything so don't name it as a straw hat just see it as light and shade and then just paint those light and shades as you see it and eventually it just starts to work and it starts to look like what you're actually painting no matter what subject it is so that's a really good thing to do is if you find that there's no detail at all just paint what you see just get your basic color in there your, your sort of your subtleties of the shadows and everything and then just go over with the white like you see me doing here and then you just glaze over again 
and then put the subtleties back in. So it skates going backwards and forwards with the white and then glaze, white glaze, until you get that sort of desired effect you're looking for. Now for the white I normally use a Caran d'Ache but I've started to use more of the Faber Castell white which is this one here uh, because it's got a hard lead I can sharpen it to quite a nice point with it and it's very vivid like the Caran d'Ache and it's really handy for this getting that freshness underneath and glaze over so if you see anything what some areas that's more fresher than others because what you're looking at is the chroma the value the temperature so if you if something needs to be more sort of chromatic put the white down then use the lemon yellow on the top it creates that sort of feeling of uh, the brightness shining through so that's what i'm doing here is just adding that little bit of lemon yellow here and there where the glow is and changing it up in, with the burnt sienna and the green for the shadow areas so yeah, it's, it's uh, once you get the formula, it's just um, it just flows. There's no stress at all. You know, you just sort of just go with it, just let it happen. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me because this would help the channel to grow. Now for the silky looking top she's wearing uh, with a little bit of lace in there. So first of all, you just got to do that under drawing first, just laying that white in and then mapping certain areas. Now, you've, again, you've got to find that pattern and don't worry about doing exactly the same. It's just your interpretation on it. If you can go as close as you can to the pattern, it helps you don't get lost in it then and, and it causes stress because you get lost and you're not really sure what sort of color to put in here and there so i'll just put the white down first and i'm just glazing over the blue and then a bit of red in certain areas and then just feeling your way and just building it up i just put in that little bit more white in and just enjoying the freedom of just expressing yourself and just let it happen now to help get the pattern i'm using a gray here now it's a 726 the color of that gray is it's slightly bluer than the 708 and it's ideal for this sort of thing when you're doing like a because it's got like a bluey haze to this silky top so that color worked worked really well you just got to persevere and just keep building up these layers uh, it does take a while to build up to the shimmer look to it yeah, but this is just an underdrawing so you're just basically getting that sort of pattern and the shapes right and once you're happy with that then you can pile in the pigment then to get that sort of really fresh bright feel which you'll see me do later on now to create that freshness now i'm using the caran d'ache as a right and just and then combination of that and the faber castell white um just to get that sort of freshness and just keep glazing and then just put adding that little bit of red to it to create a purpley feel to it right down to real time here just so you can see how i'm adding these uh, sort of marks in here and i'm using a 724 gray pencil here it's even more bluer than the 726 which is ideal really for when you put in these sort of subtleties in this lace because it's a similar sort of colour uh, and then you can just lighten it up with a bit of white or you can sort of add that blue or red to it just to change it up in places so you have to experiment with what greys you've got and then just put these sort of primary colours over the top really just to subtle it up and, and create that sort of realism Now in places to get the real freshness I'm adding a little bit of Rembrandt white and then mix it in then by using the Faber Castell over, over the top. So you put the pigment down from the stick and then move it around then with the white pencil. And I only did that in certain areas where it's really fresh. 
So it's a case of just keep persevering until it feels right. But you have to be careful not to overdo it. So best to keep looking in the mirror and to see the reflection of it, just to see how it looks. Uh, and just, just go with the atmosphere of it and the feel of it. And if it feels right, leave it, but don't go over detailed with it because it'll just it'll look too stiff uh, it can throw everything off if you're not careful because all the uh, attention needs to be on my sister's aura and energy rather than these details so I've kept it quite loose because that's the way my sister likes the paintings she likes them quite loose so that's why I've done it into the pastel mat here because she quite likes that idea now I'm just showing you how I'm using the complementary of blue to create natural shadows as well. So using the orange in here with the blue to create natural subtlety of desaturation. So I'm just do, showing you here real time how I'm glazing that in. I'm just using a finger just to sort of blend it in here and there. Once happy with it, it's just a case then of putting the hair strands over it now. So I'm just using the brown of the Carbothello. Now I've sharpened it with a knife, so it's got like an edge to it. So it's not to a sharp point, it's just got little bits of edge. And I just keep turning the pencil to find a new edge. And it's surprising how thin you can actually get these lines. And I'm just putting them in now, sort of spontaneously, and letting it flow and um, just putting that suggestion of a fine hair here and there just to, to give that sort of realism to the hair and the drawing. Just like to offer you again this free class it's a skin tone shadow class it's like a color wheel I've developed but the actual color idea can apply to anything you do whether it's landscape, pets, wildlife so it's there for you if you wish to have a free class, the link in the description below. So please check that out if you're interested. So what I'm doing now in this particular time is to look in the mirror a lot and to get a sort of feel of the actual um, things that need to be adjusted here and there to create that realism. I'm looking at the whole image, trying everything to become one um, because everything is one that shouldn't be separate, shouldn't be like hair, face, hat, clothes. Because the aura of that person, of the energy of the person, is covering everything you see. So it all becomes one of, and it has the essence of my sister in everything, really. So I'm trying to make sure that I relax and sense this energy. And the, the way you do that is to open the heart, let go of the mind and just project this open heartness to the reference image and then you feel all this energy come back and it goes through you out of your hands into the actual drawing and it, and you get these insights of what needs to be done I don't think about these adjustments these adjustments just happen I just sense that they need a little bit here and there so you just need to relax and just be aware of the overall feeling rather than details it's got to feel like everything is a oneness now to make this gold shimmer i'm putting the white in first i'm just twisting it and the, the tooth of the plastic mat is actually grabbing that pigment and then just go over them with a bit of lemon yellow and burnt sienna to create that gold but to create that really vibrancy is to add the white first and then just put it the yellow and burnt sienna over the top it just takes a little bit of practice but it, it does get there in the end and um, it's just a case of just keep persevering with it until it looks something like but again you don't have to put every detail it's just what it looks like from a distance when somebody observes the painting from a distance it's whether it seems realistic or not. I hope you enjoyed that video, part two. Now, uh, yeah, it's just a case of just keep relaxing and just being in the moment, here and now, and it just seems to just happen. The more you can let go of the mind, open the heart, that's the key. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more of my work, please check out this video here. Take care.
Bye for now.